All right, so let's look at collisions now. I know we already touched on collisions, but this is kind of a follow-up to that. So you can see we have our sphere going up and down, and the collisions are looking pretty good. What I have in this example is we have a sphere. We calculate the velocities. We do a retime. The reason why we do a retime, otherwise, if we look at the in-between values, it's there we have stepping and if you do the the time blend you will have perfect in between subframe movement then i make it just a bit bigger and on this side i will convert it into an influence field rename that to influence pressure like we've been doing so far invert it merge it together on the other side i have collision and collision vel also exactly like we've been doing so far. Merge everything and I cache it. And that is the collision that we are getting here. The reason we do pressure is like you saw in the previous example, pressure will push everything outwards. So if we don't add pressure here, the collisions are still gonna work. Uh, and in, mo in most cases, this is going to be enough and good for you. But if you run, if you want something extra, you can try applying pressure to collisions just like this, and maybe you will get the result you need. This will also help with some fast moving collisions um, or some in some extreme cases where you need really precise collisions. Adding pressure might give you that extra bit of push that you need for your collisions, especially if the collisions are more detailed or super small. So give that a go. You can see there's some cool swirling happening here as well. All right. On the left, we have the basic collision setup that we looked be, uh, before. So just collision, collision bell. Let me preview this one. So this is the basic setup without pressure. All right. And then here on the right, we have a more, uh, it's not It's not more advanced. It's the same thing, just has a bit more stuff. We have our flippy. I determine the front elements and then I transform it like so. So flippy is rotating and flowing through the air. This is something, let's say you have a meteor or a car or whatever, this is how I would do collisions. So we have our front collision, well, our front group, I just remove it. I expand it a bit, so it's a bit, uh, I peak it essentially, scatter points and convert that to density. This is going to be our emitter for density. On the other side, we have our full flippy. Uh, I make it just a bit bigger. And then I do the same influence and influence pressure like we've been doing here. It's the same thing. On the right, I do collision and collision bell, just like we've been doing so far. Now, inside of here, the only difference, you can bypass this, but what I'm doing here is I'm taking the collision bell, calculating the length, so we get the speed attribute, fitting it uh, between 0 and 7, because that's roughly how fast this is going. I clamp it, and then I use that to multiply my influence pressure. You will see what that does. So, And then I cache everything. So I have... I preview our flippy here and I do the same. No. If we didn't multiply our pressure, then the pressure would be applied in the beginning as well. If you multiply it, the pressure will only be applied when the areas are moving faster. So that's how this collision looks now, and it's pretty perfect. So if I don't do this, so let's bypass, and we are now just merging pressure and 
collision valve exactly like we're doing here it's the exact same thing uh, let's cache this now i like always caching the fields just because even doing you know a few different vdbs from your geometries can take uh, some time to compute so now our pressure is you can see in the beginning it's already pushing everything out so if i increase this to two it will still look good once the flippy starts moving but in the beginning it's going to look unnatural because it's already pushing everything out so that's why you would have to multiply it like so and then you cache it so now you can see in the beginning it's not pushing the velocity out the pressure is not pushing anything out because we multiplied it let me get back into perspective but we can increase the pressure just a bit so it will be much more intense when flippy is moving much faster and that will give us almost this bullet effect which is pretty cool and then we can cache this and it's going to be way way faster if you just cache everything you won't have to obviously if you have to see it to to uh, iterate on it but once you cache it it's going to be very fast all right so that's a bit more on collisions uh, i will provide you the hip file so you can play with it and hopefully create some awesome visual effects with axiom all right see you in the next video